Good evening and welcome to another Bible study. Um, if you're joining us here in beautiful Guyana, it's just about seven o'clock. Um, in the Eastern Caribbean, um, depending on which part you are, it might be six or even seven o'clock. In North America, it's six o'clock. And um, in Europe, um, you might be um, close to midnight. But wherever you would have joined us, um, today is Wednesday, um, the final Wednesday in the month of December 2022. And uh, we are coming towards the end of what um, we would have celebrated culturally, the Christmas season. And the Christmas season um, has become synonymous with the sharing of gifts or the giving of gifts. and. Uh, I know um, at times persons might be somewhat disappointed with what they receive as a gift at Christmas time. And in some places, in some stores, you're allowed to return the gift if you're not satisfied. Um, but we have been stressing over the past several weeks that the Christmas season, it's all about Jesus. While culturally we eat, we drink um, things that are culturally associated with where we live, um, but 
generally the Christmas season is all about Jesus. So we say Jesus is the reason for the season. And in scripture, um, why do we say Jesus is the reason for the season? Um, because in scripture it tells us that God sent his only begotten son. And John 3.16 tells us um, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the gift to the world, um, the glorious, the most wonderful, um, the most precious gift has been God giving his son to the world. And so tonight in our Bible study, we want to focus on the significance of that gift and the fact that when Jesus was born, um, he was born of low estate. Um, in fact, he was born in a major. And uh, we want to focus on that. And also we want to look on the fact that despite where he was born, his greatest achievement has been the saving of our lives or giving us salvation. So we want to ask you at this time, um, we're remembering also our brothers and sisters in North America who are experiencing um, heavy snowfall, ice, and the weather is extremely cold. Our prayers are with you, and we trust that God um, will see you through this difficult period of time. Some persons who might still be stuck at the airport waiting to get home or to travel to some other part of the United States or North America in general, um, our thoughts and prayers are with you. So tonight, invite a friend. Um, I know it's still busy. People are still going about um, several things um, to celebrate the Christmas season. But we ask that you take a, um, some time out. Um, call a friend, call a neighbor, and join us as we share um, this wonderful um, news, this wonderful gift that has been given to the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. With me tonight um, is Pastor Paul Benjamin and Reverend Anthony Semple. So I'm going to invite Pastor Paul Benjamin at this time, and he is going to share um, some greetings with you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. You know, as you were talking about the people in North America who were experience, experiencing such, you know, drastic weather and things like that, uh, my heart really goes out to those families who have lost loved ones and we need to continue to pray for them. Well, today it's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful evening in Guyana. And uh, we are happy that you have joined us to really sit and study the Word of God. You know, Dr. Lee, as you spoke about the importance of a gift and the giving of a gift, you know, one of the important things about a gift, you can receive the gift, but if you don't open the gift, you know, you can just look at this gift, oh, it's well wrapped, you know, it's beautiful, and you keep admiring the gift. But if you don't open the gift, if you don't partake of it, you wouldn't benefit from uh, that gift that was given. And uh, tonight, our encouragement is to partake of the gift, the gift of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Open our hearts to him so that he can come in and sup with us and we with him we can abide with him and he with us and benefit from this precious gift uh, of our lord jesus christ we want to say hello to our brethren in this beautiful city of georgetown and its environs uh people in the rippling area people on the east coast, the west coast of Demerara, the east coast, you know, the west coast of Essequibo and Burbis, we are so delighted that you have joined us tonight. So stay tuned and be blessed. And uh, we want to encourage all our Facebook viewers to keep sharing our page, keep liking our page. We are truly appreciative of your comments your encouragement uh i believe it's just a second or so might elapse before a comment comes in so 
you are very robust in your comments and you keep encouraging each other. You know, last week, one of the things that really touched me uh, as I viewed the comments while my brother, one of my brother um, was sharing is to see the encouragement of brethren encouraging each other right on the chat. So we want to encourage all of you. Please, let's continue to do what we are here to do as we encourage each other, as we uh, study the Word of God and let the Word of God make an impact in our lives. God bless you. Let's receive Reverend Semple at this time. Good evening to you, Dr. Lee, Pastor Paul. Good evening to all you wonderful brethren from literally across the world. God bless you. Good evening, good morning, whatever time it is in your neck of the woods. <laughs> we just want to give God praise and thanks for yet another day that he allowed us to be alive. And we want to shout, hallelujah, praise God. Is there anybody that can give God a high note of praise? We want to bless him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that we are not in the congregation of the dead. We are alive and well. You know, and uh, once we are alive, there is purpose. You know, I, I, I normally say, even when, you know, you go through pain and, and challenging times, I normally say, you know, the dead can't feel. So it is better to feel pain than to feel nothing at all, <laughs> you know. So that's that's one of the things that help me, you know, when I go through different things, and when we go through different things, we must be so minded to know that that the fact that we are feeling pain it is an indication that we are alive, and once we are alive, there is purpose, and so we want to bless God for purpose, and thank God for bringing us through. That Lee did mention. Up front that this is the last Wednesday of 2022 and the Lord hitherto had the Lord been with us praise God for bringing us through uh, yet another year and it would have looked as though we only started 2022 yesterday or you know in terms of time and this must be these must be the last days because the time is being shortened it would seem you know before you send knife the people say you know we finish another year and so we're in the heels of 2023 and uh, we are looking forward to seeing what god has in store for us as it relates to his plan his purpose let us position ourselves to hear from him you know we, we would normally use the entire month of january to set ourselves apart by the way that daniel fast will commence on the ninth monday the ninth of january and it will go right on to the sunday the 29th so during that period let us ensure that we gear up ourselves set ourselves um i could already tell there are some people who will decide that nothing will be left over <laughs> You know, but please be careful. Uh, I'm talking to myself too, praise God. <laughs> As we set ourselves to so a wonderful time of separation because we we believe God wants us to, to, to be in place to hear what he wants us to hear. Kudos to all those who would have been with Bible study uh, since we've been online like this in a deliberate way. There are some of you who never miss a Bible study, you always hear. You know, some might have missed a couple, you know, but there are some I'm conscious that there are people who like literally never miss a Bible study since we are like this. And hats off to you, you know, to God be the glory. And um, I normally say that Bible study and, and prayer meeting, those people who attend those services, they really they really mean business with God. They are going on next level. They are, they are, they are stepping into different waters, you know, and um, those are two real challenging services to really stay with, all right? But it, it speaks to your own, your own growth and the trajectory of your development by the grace of God once you stay with services like these. So we want to bless God for those that are on YouTube so far. Um, 
Dennis J, Monica Light, Mozilla Juke, Sonia James, Deborah Thomas Mason. By now I could close my eyes and call some of these names. <laughs> it's amazing, you know. Uh, Michelle Abrams, a Cheryl Blakeney, wow. Who else do we have? A Shanna Lashley, Claudette Lamott, Sonia James, I think I called that before. Marva Allen, yes. And so many other people that are um, on the program tonight. And I know Pastor Paul will find a way to reach out to those on Facebook and Dr. Lee as well, so that we could, you know, just continue to shout out to you. And we want to bless God for this time that we can spend like this. We want to bless God for our Bishop. Thank you, Bishop, for giving us this opportunity to flow like this. And uh, it means that you repose tremendous confidence in us to follow through. And by the grace of God, we are trusting that we are upholding the standards that, that you have set in place. Praise God. We look forward to continuing to, to be a blessing. Thank God for, for you and your entire family. And um, welcome home to, to your, your family. Amen. Praise God. And we are continuing to, to bless God. We see the smiles on their faces. They are happy to be back home. And we really want to celebrate. With, the, with, the, with your family, Bishop. We really want to bless God. We had a wonderful weekend. Last weekend, it was very much packed with many functions. Um, and we want, really want to bless God for how he's helped us. The, our children's concert was a blessing, um, both in person on a 93.1 on Christmas Day, uh, or, or Night of Carlin. Praise God for helping us. And, and we thought that you were blessed and our women's investment webinar was such a blessing. And so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday is amazing. Even through the season, we're working and we wanna bless God for all those who would have contributed, who put their hands to the plow. It was very challenging this time around, but it's amazing. God is faithful, he continues to be faithful and uh, let us continue to set ourselves and those who may still be on the sidelines, you know that there, there is work for you to do. Please get yourself involved. Come on board and let's see what God is going to do even as you make yourself available. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Father, we bless you tonight. We give you honor. We give you glory for your goodness and your grace. You've been with us. You've helped us thus far. It's amazing how you are doing the different things that you do. We thank you for empowering us. We thank you for leading us and guiding us for your name's sake. We thank you for, for lifting us up where we belong. And we say thanks for your goodness and your grace expressed towards us. Thanks for how you've helped us week after week. Oh God, at Bible study, so that we could be a blessing, we could encourage and say the things that you want us to say and, and bring encouragement to so many people, even to our own selves. And tonight is no different even as we sit at your feet we know that you, Jesus, you are the master teacher. And we all, even though we are presenters, we are your oracles, yes, but we are students in your class. And so we humbly come tonight to hear what you have to say to us. So we say thanks for this platform. Thank you, God, for Minister Anthony, who is behind the scenes, ensuring that everything is okay. We ask God that you bless this program, you bless us tonight, even as we delve into your word. Thanks that your word you, we shall hide in our hearts that you that we may, may not sin against you. So well, thanks once again for helping us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. God is an awesome God. Yes, well, Dr. Lee yes. gave us a glimpse of what we want to do tonight. And I thought that, that was really wonderful. For the last couple of weeks we delved into the whole advent. Uh, at one time, we looked at Joseph and his particular role that he had to play, you know, hearing and finding out that his, his wife, his spouse's wife, praise the Lord, 
was pregnant and it, it had not had nothing to do with him and the, you know the, how we managed this whole thing how we wanted to put her away privately secretly you know and the, the angel came and spoke and then it revealed to him in a dream that you shouldn't do that you know and then we looked at mary for a particular role when the angel appeared on the war and, and rattled off all those words so tonight we want to we want to look at we want to look at both of them together to see how they would have um been able to raise and the circumstances surrounding um the birth of their son so we looked at them separately we want to look at them together in the context of luke chapter 2 and um from verses 1 to 21 but verse 7 uh would be our focus and so let me just go ahead and read a couple of verses leading up to uh verse 7 and then we'll take it from there verse 1 of luke chapter 2 says and it came to pass in those days that they went out a decree from caesar augustus that all the world should be taxed and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, very key to understand, Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, to so move from there into Judah under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. So he was very was, both of them, himself and wife. And they were going to, to be they were going to move as a result of this decree. And it's amazing how that in itself is in keeping with the prophecy that he would be born in Bethlehem. But they weren't in Bethlehem, and the word of God says she was, she was very pregnant. You know, she was very full, and um, this decree came, and uh, they had to move. So, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Wow! And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. What a story. And so we want to see if we could examine um, the surroundings and the circumstances um, that led to his, his birth, looking at both Mary and Joseph together. Let's go. Um, Reverend Semple, um, thank you so much. And um, well, you, you, you mentioned the circumstance uh, as you read, um, why they were in Beth, why they have, why they went to Bethlehem, I should say, and um, a bit of geography there. It's about. As the crow flies, it's about 70 miles um, traveling. And But if we consider the twists and the turns in the road, the distance would increase. And for those of us who live on the coast, it's not flat land. Um, it would have been undulating, um, to use um, a soft term. I didn't want to say hilly or mountainous, but it's undulating, meaning up and down. And you know, what is important here is that God used um, Caesar Augustus um, to fulfill the prophecy that we find in Micah chapter 5 that speaks to the fact that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. And so the point is God can use um, anyone. And sometimes as believers, we question, we oftentimes question or we ask ourselves, why God? Why God? Why this? Um, but I'm sure 
perhaps given the fact that Mary was pregnant, um, perhaps um, a similar question might have passed through their minds. Why do we have to go? In why did she um, have to travel given her circumstance, given her pregnancy and all of that? But in obedience, despite the harsh journey for a pregnant woman, they embarked on the journey and God's word was fulfilled. So we can draw from that, um, that you know, sometimes um, we are moved out of our comfort zone, um, following the calling of God, following um, the dictator, the direction of God, to fulfill a greater purpose that we may not recognize there and then. So um, despite our condition, obedience was evident here, and they followed through and the word of God. So again, you know, um, the prophetic word um, came to pass. And the words of the prophet are really measured um, by what he says, um, they come to pass. So I just want to make this long 70 plus miles and but part and um, partial fulfillment of God's purpose. So you and I might be going through arduous journey, but let's persevere, let's hold on. Let's, you know, trust God. He will fulfill the purpose to which he has called us to be fulfilled. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, Dr. Lee, as we continue to discuss the scripture, and uh, oftentimes we would say we can actually see that thread, that common thread that is interwoven, bringing a connection of the fulfillment of the scriptures relating right back to Genesis 3.15 and we see in, in, in Isaiah 7.14 and in Matthew 1, in, in Matthew 2, in Luke 1 and now here we are seeing because <laughs> when we read verses 1 to 7 we actually, this is the actual beginning of the fulfillment of that prophecy that we read in Luke 1 from verse 26 to 38. We focused on that a few weeks ago um, where it, the birth of Jesus were foretold by, uh, it was foretold by the angel, angel Gabriel. And um, we are seeing now, so that is, you're seeing that thread interwoven into uh, what is the fulfillment of God's purpose and God's plan for redemption. And, um, you know, Dr. Luke places uh, the word of God in a historical context um, in, in terms of his narrative. He speaks a lot about world history he speaks a lot about tongues and, and, and he speaks a lot about Nazareth. It's not by accident. And um, it is believed that Augustus, Caesar Augustus was one of the greatest, the first and one of the greatest emperor of uh, Rome. He actually changed the, 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 the system of government from a republic to, to an imperial form of government and so um you're seeing here but notwithstanding his greatness <laughs> god used him uh, notwithstanding who he is god used him at this particular time and this particular season for the fulfillment of his purpose the purpose of the birthing of our lord and savior jesus christ what what an imagery um what what a calling what what a time to to be living in and um imagine his influence this man had world influence he actually expanded the 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 um the imperial of rome to include like um the meditative Mediterranean world and all of all of those to include them in as as the um, empire of Rome and so this man had 
world influence. And can you imagine a man making a decree and the entire world was subject and was obedient? So it's, it's, it's very important for us to understand that God places people at specific times and places for his specific purpose, notwithstanding what they may do or their own um, system of belief and, and operation. But God's purpose must and will be fulfilled. I like that, you know, Pastor Paul. That's so solid there because what this lets me know is that you know, sometimes um, leaders feel that they are, well, they're doing, their, they're doing the work, all right? And they think that they're of themselves. And it's amazing how, how it is that they're being used and they don't even know that they're being used. Because when I look at this in the grand scheme of things, you know, mm -hmm. this ruler made this decree Mm -hmm. and literally put this family into purpose <laughs> you know i like the the, the 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 two moving trucks that 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 mm -hmm. we see happening they were settled in galilee and nazareth you know i guess i perhaps they might have been thinking okay well this is where it's gonna be who knows all right um but they were pushed and lots of mm -hmm. times god can use different things the push us, you know. I, I like I like the the the, the both the um the macro and the micro that we could actually see working in tandem so that purpose could be fulfilled. It's amazing mm -hmm. how that happened. How that happened. I I want us to just delve into verse seven, which is really the hub of of our our conversation tonight our teaching tonight and of course we're going to pull um, from the context that is laid but verse 7 says and she brought forth her firstborn son wow and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn wow this must not be lost upon us what's happening here you know a lot of times we just read and we roll we have, we have a general understanding but when you start delving into what's happening here then you, you have an appreciation really for who this christ child is and you know and how he wants to relate to, to mankind and this is this is just amazing a manger a lowly place, mm -hmm. a long trough from which horses or cattle would feed. <laughs> you just just think about this. Just think um, along this line. This is the the king of kings. How is it that you can't find a place for him in your life? You gotta find a place for him in your life. All right, you gotta find a place for him. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's just let's just let's just move over to the fact that the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I mean, couldn't God? Maybe these are questions we ask. Couldn't God find a, a find a way for them to be born in? A palace befitting of a king. Um, think about this. Which queen you know was born in circumstances like these? And it's amazing. I mean, this just got us really thinking about the lowly estate and the fact that. He came for the ordinary people. Of course, not just the ordinary people, right? Um, but he wanted to touch base 
with people who feel marginalized and they feel as though they must be judged because of where they would have come from. And many people would have suffered humiliation, suffered discrimination as a result um, of where they would have come from. As soon as they hear that you come from a particular village, ah, uh, boy, people start backing up because they want nothing to do with you. And so I like this. I like this because it, it gives a perspective that great things could be wrapped in packages that we sometimes could miss. And we have to be very mindful, even as we treat the people, even as we, you know, we inter interface with different ones. This has given us a perspective for us to really um, <laughs> revisit how we conduct ourselves as human beings, you know, revisit, just go back to the drawing board and literally relinquish certain perception, you know, but this world is, is, is really moving in a particular way. But that's why the word of God encourages us to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Because there's a way of thinking that God wants us to adopt that is definitely contrary to the world. So let's be very mindful even as we continue to flesh this out. Now, as, as Luke, Luke identifies um, the fact that Jesus was born um, in the manger, placed in a feeding trough, um, Luke is skillfully describing um, to the discerning eye the state that this society was at that time of Jesus' birth. The question that comes to mind is, this was a pregnant woman, and why no compassion was shown to her? I mean, she's pregnant, um, about to deliver a child. I would have thought that a compassionate society or compassionate people, um, compassionate in keepers, would have seen her state, um, given the fact that she came from that long distance, obviously her feet um, dusty, um, riding on a donkey and all of that. Some amount of compassion would have been extended to her and allow her to go into the inn, um, probably, um, maybe evict or, or ask some kind-hearted person, um, look, there's a pregnant woman here, give her um, um, your space. Um, but that didn't happen. It's not that God couldn't do it. But God is showing us that the child that um, was to be born would be one of compassion, even though compassion was not shown to him at the time of his birth in the, in the, in the sense that um, um, a, a comfortable space was given for him to be born. God is showing us that despite no compassion, he is compassionate to us. And so um, tonight I, I, I want to encourage us, those of us who are viewing this program, um, we don't have to conform to the standards of the world in being less than compassionate, but because of what Christ would have done for us, and what he is doing for us. We must not be conformed, but the transformation that has taken place in our lives will cause us to be compassionate. I mean, that is one element that we can look at. Um, the compassionate Lord was born in a place, in a stable, where no compassion was extended to him. You know, we often use the statement, a man's life, is not determined by his beginnings. But you know, when you really and truly examine the word of God, indeed, that is so. Because notwithstanding his place of birth, inside of him was compassion. And so we want to encourage all of us tonight, notwithstanding our place of birth, Greatness is inside of us. 
those are jewels that even if we born in 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 a very high place so to speak the best the best hospital the, the best facilities it is only god who has placed that greatness inside of us and our yielding to him will allow us to experience that greatness and for it to be a blessing not only for our lives but for others and so we must admire our lord and savior that inside of him was compassion was greatness and it had to come to that place where he had to be born so the the thrust is here tonight that sometimes the situations are adverse just before the birthing of something great but let us stay with the process let us ensure that we supervise the process of the birth the birthing because in order for for what is inside to come out the birthing must take place and uh so we are encouraging all of us tonight you know jesus loved to identify with the poor and the powerless the marginalized and when we read uh in luke later on in luke luke 4 18 you know the, the lord making that public announcement that the spirit of the lord is upon me too because he has anointed me what is the first group of people he, he spoke to he said to proclaim good news to the poor so they're high up <laughs> in his target group and tonight i am so encouraged in my own spirit that whatever our estate especially those of us who might be in a disadvantaged position god is looking out for us god is looking out for you god is looking out for people who are marginalized but we have to see it and we have to come to that place of understanding that he can do it for us so be encouraged tonight don't give up on yourself you may have a job that seemingly uh is you know not very significant but you have a job nonetheless do your best become what you must become and god will elevate you god will exalt you in due season as a follower like that you know you spoke and we flesh out all of these different things that we find um that comes out of this this particular um verse you spoke to the yes. fact that a man's life is not determined by his beginnings you know what about the fact that we should not despise the days of small beginnings you know mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. you you start off very small and lowly and uh, but that does not define who you are you know it's amazing before things could really mature and get to a particular point they were very small they were tiny look at us today you know we were at one point we were just like a dot you know in our mother's womb you know and over time look at that look at that you know so there are many that might be threatening and you even got to be very careful not to threaten your own self to abort your purpose you know and many might be threatening to squash you because of how small you're small by the grace of god i declare that you shall continue to press through because just like pastor paul said a man's life is not determined by his beginnings notwithstanding how small it might look nothing it's 
withstanding how insignificant. I guess this is what we are really saying tonight. We have come to really encourage encourage the disadvantaged. You know, um, those who feel that they don't have any say. Man, you got to be joking. God has your life in his hands. Another thing that we want to look at is the fact that, you know, naturally or generally, his birth was not befitting of who, who he is. Or he, who he was, who he is. His birth was not befitting of who he is. Generally, naturally, you know, a king must not be born in some, in some place like this. No, nah, that don't work. So naturally, generally, his birth, you know, was not befitting of who he was, who he is, and, you know, and neither his death. I mean, we gone, we race, <laughs> fast track to his death because he was born to die, right? So let me just fast track and we can come back. Even his death, you know, it wasn't befitting. This man died. Jesus they had a thief on the left and the right. <laughs> what a humiliating death, you know, and many things we're saying tonight, and I'm trusting the Lord that we're going to be able to capture, you're going to be able to capture all of these different things. This humility, you know, the word of God says in, in, in Philippians 2, let this mind be in you that was awesome in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, no reputation, you know, not low reputation, made himself of no reputation and took on himself the form of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Wow, he humbled himself. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names, that at the name of Jesus, we know this scripture very well, every knee should bow, whether things in heaven, whether things on earth, whether things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so because... He humbled himself in birth, <laughs> right? Because we all know too well that a, a different place could have been orchestrated for his birth. But God organized it like that. He's the king of kings, man. He could have been born in the best um, state-of-the-art facility, some, you know, of the day. But no, God organized his birth there and he organized his death, how he died. All right, so that his humility could be showcased. And the word of God says, he was highly exalted and given a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, the same Jesus, hallelujah, every knee should bow. So whether you're dealing with things in the heavenlies, whether you're dealing with things on earth or under the earth, you know, all kinds of stuff happening around and so on and so forth, and attacks from left, right, and center, Jesus is the name. Say the name Jesus tonight. Jesus is the name. You know, so we can see the effect of, of how all of these things have to come into play because humility had to be entrenched in order for him to be exalted the way that he was exalted and given a name. And, and this is teaching us something. Never mind all the, the crumbs and the achievements that we would have. And it's good to achieve. I, I, I hope it, it it's not coming across as though um, we shouldn't go for, reach for the stars, you know. We always celebrate, even as a local church, we celebrate success, we, so, we celebrate um, academics, we, 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 we bless God for those who flow in this direction. And, you know, we, as a matter of fact, we will encourage folks to come along. But we have to ensure that nothing don't get to our heads you know, and our degrees uh, don't make us so bent out of shape, you know. You know, the word of God says, not many mighty, not many noble are called, you know, because something apparently like power and education, if you don't really harness it properly, you could really do more damage than good. 
you know, and uh, you know, exhorting all the 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 power, knowledge, you know, that there is. Please let us balance. Let us have a balance, and I believe Jesus is a perfect figure for us to see balance in. Amen. Can any good thing come out of Bethlehem? Can any wow. good thing mm. come out of Nazareth? Mm. Can any good thing come out of Workmanville, Albystown Lodge? Yes, yes. Camberville. Um, Beautiful. So those are questions um, that people would ask. Um, because sometimes, you know, um, we sometimes limit our own selves by our place of birth. You know, as we travel, you know, on your passport, when you're pulling up, um, your immigration form, you know, they ask up to this um, 2022, they still ask about your place of birth and you have to state it. And, you know, we have categorization like third world country, underdeveloped countries, developing countries. We have developed countries, um, you know, and, and, and we list those things because I feel sometimes um, they are used to um somewhat discriminate at times um your place of birth um, puts you in a particular um um social structure or, or a social order and um i'm happy that jesus christ was born where he was born um, because like you rightfully said um uh, reverend semple um it establishes the fact that of it establishes his humility, um, his, his, his manliness, um, it, it, his, um, the fact that, that, you know, he was fully God and at the same time he was fully man. But I think um, more importantly, um, his place of birth um, establishes the fact that we all have access um, to the manger and where he was born. We all have access to him. He's no longer in the manger. But we all have access. Had he been born um, in the palace, well, the doors obviously would have been shut upon us. Had he been born in the inn, probably we had to pay to get inside. But being born in the manger, it's access because the lonely, the meek, um, the discarded, those ostracized, those who are marginalized can go to the inn, can go, sorry, can go to the manger. And so, God in his divine wisdom um, has his son born there because he knew fully well that you and I, without money, without being esteemed, without being exalted in the society, we have access to him and so that we can utilize, we can benefit for the very reason why he came, Emmanuel, God with us, so he can move in into our community and we can have fellowship with him. Beautiful. You may born there, but don't stay there. <laughs> you know, the scripture says he grew in stature and in wisdom, in favor with God and in favor with man. Man, amen. And, uh, you know, again, we keep going back. You know, man's life is not determined by his beginnings. You know, we must not despise small beginnings because that is just the beginning as it is. Uh, there is so much more for us to achieve as we put ourselves in place. And God just ensured that the fulfillment of the prophecy of his birth that was foretold came to pass and whatever he has in store for you and has in store for me it will be birthed it will come to pass if we stay with him um urban sample verse eight <laughs> yes yeah. verse eight is such you know, you, it's like it's out my mouth, man. I was not going to jump <laughs> into my mouth. <laughs> Verse 8 is something else. 
This is the voice says, right here. It says, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, mm -hmm. keeping watch over their flock by night. So this is at an, in another location in same um, jurisdiction, but just in another location. They were they were in the same country shepherds abiding in the in in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. I mean, last week we talked about the rush of information that, that came upon um, Mary. 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 Like, this is the MO of this angel. Oh, this angel, like, he like, gave plenty of information. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so the like the vehicle, angel, you like the vehicle past the Benjamin got the rush. <laughs> <laughs> I like the that came <laughs> <back> to me. <laughs> rush. You gotta remember that. Oh, the my rush goodness. of information, you know? So yes. it's just very significant too, right? So just in case you were wondering, shepherds, I mean, if you look at the stratification, the social stratification of shepherds they were right at the bottom of the list mm -hmm. you know of the ladder so to speak you know the, the god ladder that's another joke for another time not now <laughs> <laughs> they're right at the bottom 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 so i mean once again i believe god didn't want us to miss that we ought to be humble and we ought to and he didn't want us to miss the fact that he is starting from the ground up. All right? Amen. So Jesus was born in a manger in, in real lowly circumstances. And then first word, the shepherds who were a, a lower, lower, lower class of people. I mean, the angel could have gone to anybody else. Think about it again. God could have organized this thing differently. But he came to the shepherds and he Gave the shepherds a word, man. This God is awesome, you know. Yeah, and um, we got to be very mindful once again. I mean, so many things can be said about this. I know we're we're on wrap up time, but just be careful, you know. Don't write people off. Don't push them aside because of what they do. What you know, the the level of job that you might quote unquote thing that they they doing, you know. Um, you just don't know what god has in in their lives and what god will use them to do i remember bishop always making mention of the fact where he worked in the secular you saw always make friends with people who people might want to consider of low estate you know what i mean i don't know a guard is a guard that's a an, an, an honest job and he used to mm -hmm. stop and gaff and laugh and so on you know build relationships because you never, you just never know who God will use at any given time. Because remember, God looks not on the outward appearance, but he looks at the heart. And he knows who he could use at different times and in different places. All right? And so God could very well wrap his plan in someone who don't look who. Mm -hmm. quote unquote nice or look like if they got the thing for move this engine on all right mm -hmm. but that's why we always got to keep our minds open our eyes open and I bless god for bishop because god has blessed him with uncommon eyes to see people um who i don't know i'm sure you're looking you can testify of the fact and i'm asking god lord you gotta give me eyes like that so that i could i could see and you know we can see and spot people who quote unquote it may not look like much but man the packing a serious punch you know what i mean mm -hmm. and easily they themselves could push themselves aside because maybe of how, how they would have grown up or, or their own circumstance or how they feel and their own perception or people's perception upon them so i mean praise god many things and i'm sure my brother's gonna wrap this up 
nicely. <laughs> Amen. You know, look, I look, look as a champion. You know, um, he moves from me? the yeah, he moves from the from the manger, and he takes us to the shepherd. I mean, these men were watching their flocks by night, and not mm -hmm. only an angel came and visited. You know, but the scripture says, "And the glory of the Lord shone around." The oh, presence of God. I mean, these were the lowest, the lowest, the lowest of society, but still they were visited by the presence of God. So where you might be, you were living now, you might be in blackout, you might be in darkness, you might be oh, living Jesus. in a house that doesn't have a proper door, proper windows, mightn't have a fence, you mightn't be having running water. But that would not prevent the presence of God from visiting you. And like Reverend Temple rightly said, it's your condition of your heart. I mean, these men, these men were humble men. These men were concerned for the flock. And despite the weather, whatever it might have been, despite the darkness, because of their care and concern, God visited them. And so, no lights, but the glory of the Lord, the presence of the Lord came. No, <laughs> no power company light, but God can still visit. No water, no front door, no back door, or perhaps no pepper pot, no black pig, wow. no garlic pork. God can still visit like he did to the angels, the arm to the shepherds here. Amen. So just open your heart. God can visit anytime, in any place. Amen. That's the key. To attract the presence of God, to attract the glory of God, that's the key, and that's why we'll bring the change. You know, when we think about the shepherds, huh? the shepherds generally they are considered unclean, and as like we were talking, the lowest of the lowest, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. because of what they did, but yep. notwithstanding that smelly and dirty look, they had a very important function to perform. They Amen. provided nourishment. They provided direction for the sheep. Amen. They provided safety and protection. And yep. I do not believe it is by accident that the Lord himself identified himself as the Amen. good shepherd. Amen. 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 The sheep. You see the characteristic? Amen. Yes. Yep. Beautiful. Amen. So that's the kind of relationship God wants us to understand who he is that's the, the the kind of relationship he wants us to understand that in him we can provide that he provides that safety that that protection and um, he can help us to do what we are called to do our time is gone Amen. Wow. 759. Praise God. Praise it's Lord. Reverend Temple time. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lee, that is why you go wrap us up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Praise oh, God. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for the time you spent with us. We want to thank you for um, trusting God, making Jesus the Lord of your life. And you know, as, as we sign out of this program, we want to encourage you, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting, everlasting life. What a wonderful gift. On behalf of Bishop Messiah and uh, Reverend Semple, Pastor Benjamin, we want to say a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2023 with Jesus being the Lord of our life. God bless you. Amen. Thank you.
lifted up. He's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Here's my worship, all of my, all of my worship. Father, receive my. Oh